So last year at the end of 2020, we both made videos about the books that we'd read over the course of the year, and I had a really fun time making that. I had a really fun time watching those back today, and I just, I thought I'd do it again, because I like talking about books and reading. I don't do enough of it, but like last year, I'm just going to hit the highlights of things I read, stuff that I either think you might be interested in hearing about or that I just really, really loved. Um, unlike last year, I'm not going to go chronologically. When I was picking out highlights, I noticed there were like some really loose, rough categories things fell in, so I thought it might be easier to go through things in that way. Um, but first, I should start off by saying I did not successfully meet my one reading goal of reading Hank's books this year. The Anthropocene Reviewed also came out, and I haven't read that yet either. I will get to them. When we don't meet our goals, we just make new ones. Maybe 2022 is my year for reading John and Hank's books. So the first category is like basically just nonfiction, but it made me think about some of the reasons I like nonfiction. The first one is I really like reading about people who've had really different experiences from me and who have totally different sources of expertise and points of view on the world and just like different work and life experience. That's really cool. That's one of the great things about reading. Books I would recommend like this from this year include Sitting Pretty by Rebecca Tossig. This is by a disabled disability rights and disability studies scholar and teacher about her life. I also really liked The Last Stargazers by Emily Levesque. This is about observational astronomers. So yeah, a career I'm very interested in and, you know, I think probably, probably okay that I'm not pursuing, but really cool to hear more about it from people who did. I also really like nonfiction that invites you to think about the ways that the world works, the way we think about our lives and the way we work, and just kind of like reconsider or just like open your mind up to thinking about different ways um, that things might be. Like there's a reason things are the way they are, but it's it's not because it's just like how it happened. It's things we made. So anyway, I really liked Dedicated by Pete Davis. Um, that was a really different look at uh, relationships and community and career paths and like attention mainly then we get a lot of narratives from being people who are at the beginning of our careers that was really interesting to me and you know maybe that's just because I'm still a little lost in that regard I don't know if it would be as interesting to you but it would be different I think from a lot of things another really cool book about attention um but also like art and like nature and just, oh gosh, this was a really great book. How to Do Nothing by Jenny O'Dell. Super interesting and something I'm still thinking about even though I read it in like February. I also read a fair number of books that fall into categories I, I don't think you're really as interested in, which is totally fair. Um, but middle grade books with a lot of heart. We know I love these. Uh, Thanks a Lot Universe by Chad Lucas really 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 loved these characters and felt for them so much it was like funny and sweet and just yeah it hit, hit me really close to home i recently read how to become a planet by nicole Mello, and this is another really big-hearted middle grade book also really enjoyed some ya books this year uh where <laughs> the plot is basically just like teens get into ridiculous situations that continue to to stack up into even more ridiculous situations in other words things got out of hand <laughs> which yeah i know you're not as interested in YA either but i really liked little thieves by margaret owen and not my problem by kira smith another YA book that i really loved from this year didn't really fit into that category it's called switch by a.s king who's one of my favorite writers i read almost all of her books and they're really hard to describe and talk about and they usually need their own category she writes surrealist books about kids with real problems i guess is the easiest way to sum them up as a group uh the premise of switch is that time stopped at some point in 2020 this isn't a pandemic book um in that there is no pandemic in it but it also super is in that i think the ways it talks about how the world responds to big collective problems and the, the feelings that we have and the way those feelings get ignored like yeah all that resonates with 
my pandemic experiences a lot. But it's it's also just a book about a family who's been through some really hard things and the work they're doing to try to get through those things. It's, yeah, it was really, really beautiful. I never get better at talking about these, but they remain really important to me. I also read more fiction written for adults than I probably ever have this year. I read a ton of Jodi Bacall books this year, um, a lot of her older ones, a few of her newer ones. I really like like her style of writing, the way she jumps between different characters or timelines and is willing to experiment with weird setups that are a little confusing at first, but once you get really into them, I think they add a lot to the story she's telling. She's also uh, great at a twist in a way that really makes you keep reading. I read a lot of these books staying up too late at night because I just got to a certain point where it was impossible to stop reading. Another book like this that I liked this year was One, Two, Three by Laurie Frankel. This is a much more recent book about a family that's dealing with the aftermath of their town being essentially poisoned by an industrial company polluting the water. I also really liked the switching perspectives in this book. For each of the books in this category, I did find myself running into, you could call them maybe like generation differences. Maybe? I don't know. I hate generations. But things that I think I experienced really differently than maybe the authors intended because of the differences in our age. And in, in some cases with Jodi Pocault because of the differences in the place we are in the world. The, <laughs> than when they were written. Like, reading a book about a school shooting set 20 years ago is really different than the kind of understanding we have around that now in 2021. Yeah. Maybe not as different as I'd like it to be, but yeah, def definitely some jarring experiences there and some plot twists that I, I don't think were quite as, quite as unexpected for someone living in 2021 as maybe intended to be. One book I thought you might appreciate hearing about, uh, I put in a category that I called Just Fun, <laughs> in case in case you want that, but it's uh, called Fangs by Sarah Anderson, and it's actually just a super short little book of little four-panel comics about a vampire who's dating a werewolf. Yeah, if you ever need just like a little pick-me-up, but also a little like, ooh, spooky, in, in a cute way kind of flavor. I'd, I'd, I'd go for that. And the last, like, category for books I wanted to talk about this year is kind of like, what if X genre, but with Y genre, <laughs> which is, 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 is a little, <laughs> feels a little, like, pitchy. I don't know if that's the best way to describe them, but it is, like, a resonant thing with a couple different books that I thought was sort of interesting to think back looking at some of my favorites. So I would not shut up about uh, Gideon the Ninth and Hero the Ninth earlier this year. You were there for that. And I think it's really clear from like the cover and the summary and just the way these books get talked about and marketed that it's like fantasy in space. And so it's, it's a combination of fantasy and sci-fi already. That's really cool. But I think what took my appreciation for these books to a, another level entirely, particularly Gideon the Ninth, is that it's not only sci-fi fantasy, it's also a mystery. And that's, ooh, that's really cool. I really loved, like, the way all of those things blended together in a way that was totally true to, I think, the mystery genre. Also just doing something that felt, like, different and cool and new. Like, ugh, it was just a great blend. They're just, yeah, so goth, so good. Ugh. Anyway, I, I need to stop talking about those books because otherwise we'll be here too long. But the other book I want to end with is appropriately called One Last Stop. Um, I tried to read romance novels this year, and like my quest to read more books that are marketed to adult. I don't know if that genre is really for me, but this was one that I did really appreciate, I think, and partially because it falls into this fun category of, okay, what if a romance novel, but sci-fi, and it's like, not really sci-fi. It's like fantasy sci-fi. The science is, is not important, but there's some like cool time travel stuff. Also just a very funny book. It made me laugh a lot. Same with same with the Gideon the Ninth books. Same with a lot of these books on my list this year. It was ugh, 
it, it was helpful to have things to, to, to laugh about. But books are so good for that. Books are so good for so many things. I've been talking so long. I want this to be shorter than last year's, but we'll see. Editing syntax. Ooh. Gosh, I hope we hear from you soon, Alex. I don't know. I didn't get better at ending these things after a year, that's for sure. Happy reading! <laughs>